for this morning's demo we're going to use we're going to do some french knitting using a peg tool so this is just an example of stuff you can make you can you can encase beads with it um you can draw it through draw plate you can leave it loose it's very similar to crochet work but takes away the need to, to, to have to be able to crochet. It's also quite similar um, to Viking knit. You can get a similar effect to Viking knit. So if you've struggled with Viking knit, this is, this is an easier way to do it. So what do we need? We're going to need, um, I've got 0.4 wire. Um, you've also got in the kit some coloured wires, which are 0.5. They work great with it. We've got some 0.8 to do the, the, the clasps, um, thread through, um, little extra bits with it um, you're going to need your tools we've got two in the kit one is a four uh, pin and one is a six pin and as you can see they have a hole through the middle and this is where your um, knit is going to come out through um, so you also need a crochet hook to loop the material over uh, you need a pair of wire cutters round nose pliers um, a baling pliers if you're going to make your own jump rings, uh, some of the beads if you're going to encase the beads and if you're going to draw it so these have been drawn through a draw plate then you're going to need a draw plate. Okay let's get cracking. So we're going to concentrate on I would say making a basic. Um, so this is a, a full length necklace piece that you can make uh, I'm going to wind that up over there. Now you could draw that and make it longer. By drawing it, it will pull this all closer and, and effectively stretch, stretch the stitches. So if you look on here, the stitches, you'll see sort of it goes in groups. Well, those are the stitches. So if you draw it through a draw plate, those st stitches will, will elongate. So we're going to go through the basics. So I'm going to start off with our, our peg tool and some 0.4 wire. I would suggest you start with a 0.4 only because it's it's a little bit more um, pliable than the 0.5. I'm not saying the 0.5 is difficult, but the 0.4 is a little bit easier. Okay, now to start off, we're going to pop the 0.4 through the center, if I look what I'm doing, through the center of the tool and out through the bottom. I'm just gonna turn that up purely just to give it a little bit of purchase. Then we're gonna come round this first peg through the middle. Now don't pull this too tight because this it, this was traditionally done with, um, with wool or cord. There's that little bit of give in it. Wire has no give. So don't pull it too tight. Just keep it nice and relaxed. And you go over the furthest part, round the outside, through the middle over the furthest part round the outside through the middle okay and you form this pattern now you can see how these are bowed that's what's giving me the extra gap to be able to do, to be able to um loop so we go round a second time round all of them same pattern once you've done all six i'm just going to hold that there so you can see we've got two on the outside of each one now this is where you start knitting. So we're going to take the lower one. Now bear in mind, this is the one that's just gone through. So this will give. We're going to get our hook, pull it up and over the top into the middle. Now I am going to pull that one slightly because it will have given. Okay, so you go round doing each of your threads. Now as you pull it, so the loop you had for the next one, the previous one, you'll pull, pick up the slack. So see where we've got this slack here? When we pull the next one, we pull some of that slack down. So don't, you know, don't think, oh, I've got plenty of slack there. I need to pull it straight away. You need that slack for the next, for the next pin. So we're now back to the start or to the, to the sixth one. We're going to pull that up and over then I just give it a gentle pull down. I don't want to pull it tight for the very reason I've said. I want that little bit of give. So you can see inside you get these bigger loops where they've just pulled off. So we're going to go round once more. Three, four, five, six. And the, 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 I'm going to go one too many. You can tell you've got one too many because you'll have more than 
two loops. Um, the four one is exactly the same process. You get a bigger stitch because the gap between here and here is bigger. Therefore, you'll get a more open weave when you finish. So I'm going to pull that one over. And the same again. And what I tend to do is I tend to go round three. Let me get hold of that one. Make sure you're only pulling the one, not picking up the stitch before. So I tend to go round three and then turn it the other way. So I'm not constantly turning in the same direction. Only because you'll find your, your wire, because I'm just using it from the reel, will get caught. If they're both together, just to separate them so you can put your... Uh, crochet hook between and pop them over. I mean it doesn't have to be a crochet hook, anything that you can lever um, that over. So we're now getting this build up inside and we're just going to pull that down and you'll start getting a pattern as you go around. So I'm just going to do that once more so that you've fully got it. And it's the sort of it's the sort of tool. A it's great fun. B, you can use um, your cords on it. You can use um, you can use any uh, t-shirt yarn on it. It can it can take anything so long as so long as you can get um, the resulting tube through through the gap there. Then you can you can pretty much use anything on it. So as we go along, I'm just going to pull that down a bit, and you can see you're starting to get a tube fin through. So you keep going along. Now, if you want to put beads in it, there are different ways you can put beads in it. So I'm going to just open this and get some beads. So as you're going along, you can stuff the beads in it, so long as you're assured that they won't come through the gap. Alternatively, when you've got your tube, or you can feed the beads onto the point eight, which is what I did here. I fed all the beads onto the point eight, put the point eight through, tied it off at the bottom, and then they just feed down. So you have it, you have it sticking up above it. So you have it sticking up here, and as you're going along, that gets pushed through as well. So that gave me the finishing on the end. Or you can, like I say, put your beads through, um, or you can pre-thread this with your beads and pop them in between the gaps as you go. So there's all sorts of different varieties and I've and I've um, done some examples of that that you'll see on the show. Now to finish off I'm going to snip this. So it, imagine you've now got the length you want. So I've got a bracelet length there. So imagine you've got the length you want. Snip your thread and then instead of going around and over we're just going to go. Let me put a bend on it through the stitch on the outside and then pull it okay so you're going through that stitch pop through and pull it if it's wool use a darning needle to, to thread it through so you're just going through each of those and catching them pull it through and then we're going to slide all these stitches off Make sure you don't catch the uprights of the actual pin. And two to go through there. Oops. You might have to re re bend your wire after a while. There we go. Pull that through. And the last one. Right, so we've gone through all of them. We can now just slide these up and over. Pull it through. Now, obviously, this is a very short one. Then I just gather those up and you pull on your thread and that will draw them all together. So that's a very, obviously, very short. That's only got like two rows on it. So once you've got all your threads off, you end up with a piece like this. And I would condition that by I'm just going to roll this gently and that will sort of even them out however you can if you want pop this through a draw plate going from the bottom end first so um, it, it just helps the way the stitches pull through don't go too small to begin with and I'm just going to pull that through a draw plate 
and you can you then treat this like you would a viking knit so you can go tighter and tighter and it will elongate your piece just gonna get a pliers to pull that through so it will elongate your piece so you now got a longer length so you can see from where we started which is like this you get a narrower tighter length now you could keep taking that down and down if you want to quite a narrow um place but it's still quite fluid to finish the ends on this all i've done is created a cap with my uh, wags y comb so i'm going to slip leave a long trail pop that up through the end when you've got about mm, enough to the similar to the length of the the cone i'm just going to pop that through the center of the cone along with the thread and then slide the cone onto the end of your knit place and then we're going to pull this access through to tighten it and there it gets a seamless finish turn your loop in the top of your cone and then you can just fashion your loop at the top of there and add on your clasp and there you've got your finished necklace